I'm out here on the Greenwater to Echo Lakes Trail again, one of my favorite trails near where I live. I'm trying not to stray too far from home during the pandemic, just trying to find inspiration without going too far. When the pandemic is lifted, then we'll be hitting some national parks and some of the places on our travel bucket list, painting bucket list, Wyoming and Yellowstone, Northern California, the Oregon coast, the Washington coast, some places we've been before where I've done watercolor paintings, um, but I haven't done an oil painting, so looking forward to that, but for now, kind of sticking closer to home, and luckily I live in a beautiful place. It's late June. It's been beautiful Pacific Northwest weather lately. Sunny, dry, not too humid, not too hot, mid 70s. And down in Tacoma, it's getting up into the mid 80s today, which is a little hot for me. And I think for a lot of Pacific Northwest people, they would say they love the sunny 70 degree days in the summer here in the Pacific Northwest but when it gets up into the 80s and 90s that's a little too hot we melt we don't like the hot weather here I know a few people do um, and that's fine for me personally I'm climatized to 70 mid 70s being perfect I lived in Japan and China for a while and it was so hot and humid there in the summer that I did get a little bit used to more hot, humid weather. I can stand it a little bit better now, but I'm quickly going back to my old ways where the 80 degree weather makes me sweat, makes me too hot. So when it gets a little warm down in the lowlands, I like to get up in the mountains where it's automatically cooler, and it is cooler here. It feels like the temperature dropped about 10 degrees when I dived into the forest. And it just, I feel so good coming up here. The smells, the sounds, the beautiful scenery. All right, well, after hiking about three miles, about an hour and a half, really pretty countryside here. I found the place I want to stop and paint. The problem is there's way too many subjects to choose from. Let me show you a few. I really love this little pool and the rapids there leading to that fallen tree with the moss covered roots. There's something very graphic and lovely about that. I also really like that set of rapids. Leads the eye down through that pool to that fallen tree with it's kind of those roots are kind of lit by the reflecting water on the rapids. That's really pretty. I love these little cascades here. So it's too many subjects to choose from. I'm gonna have to make a decision here. I don't have a whole lot of time. I need to get done in a couple hours. I think I want to get started on a larger painting and give myself a couple hours and then hike back to the truck. So let me look around a little bit, drink a cup of coffee and try to make a decision here. All right, here's the view I'm gonna paint. I like the roots of this fallen tree lit by the light on the rapids there. I like how the water is coming in from behind those roots. So I can kind of use that 
lead the eye in. I'll have the background pretty dark in the painting and lead the eye into these roots. I'll probably zoom in the composition, crop it to something like about that so that I have uh, a good chance of getting them, most of it down before I have to leave. So I'll get set up. As always, thanks so much for joining me. If you like these videos, please like and subscribe. Nice breeze blowing through here. Let me show you real quick. I've talked before about using the cropping function on the iPhone to help with composition. So just real quick, let me show you what I do. It's a good way to play with the composition and also to add some one-third lines to help you do your drawing. So here's close to the image I want with the painting. I hope this is coming through. On the iPhone, go to edit and then pick the little cropping square. You can turn off the auto straighten so you have more control. You can straighten or align it there with a slider. Now, if I hold one finger on the off and one finger on the up volume and click both at the same time, it takes a screenshot. And that's kind of the trick here. So if you can do that while you're adjusting the crop, you see, I hope it's coming through, but as I hold my finger over the corner to adjust the crop, it throws up those faint one-third lines, which help with the drawing. So I can drag it in to where I want it from the different corners. I can even select here, there's a preset format. I'm going to do an 11 by 14, which is close to a 4 by 3. They don't have an 11 by 14 here, but it's pretty close to a 4 by 3, so I'll just select that. Now I hold my finger on the corner and those one-third lines show up. Any corner I hold it on. I'm going to zoom in here. I want those rough tree roots to be close to the center, so I'm going to set those on an intersecting line, and I want this highlight here, this splashing water here at another intersecting line or just inside. If you go just inside you're closer to that 1.6 um, ideal ratio area. So I don't get too worried about it but if I'm just on the inside of those one-third lines I'm pretty happy. There I like that. So now I'm gonna hold my finger on the corner and keep those one-third lines and I'm gonna click both these buttons and take a screenshot. Okay, and then I've got that. Now I'll go ahead and hit done, and that's the reference image without the lines. And then I can go here, and there's the reference image with the lines. So I can edit this one, and just zoom in on the actual image. And that really helps me get the drawing down quick on the panel. Sometimes I draw in pencil, sometimes I draw with the paint itself, but just having those one-third lines as a quick grid, if you're familiar with drawing with a grid, you'll know exactly how this can help you with drawing. It just it helps you get your proportions very quickly. All right, there it is. That's close enough. So first up, I'll mix up a few rough colors and wash in using turpentine. Do an initial wash just to set the tone. In the scene, you know, the obvious colors are the greens and the browns. But I need to kind of look beyond that because I want the initial wash to be a little lighter and a little warmer than the final scene. It'll make the painting more interesting 
um, the lighter the initial wash is. Some of that will peek through later and especially warmer underpaintings will make a, a dark green and blue seam glow and kind of vibrate because of the complementary colors. So in the water I'm seeing some yellow so I'll do yellow for this foreground water and maybe a little bit of cad yellow and red for some of these rocks in the foreground and then in the background I see a lot of warm reds in the shadows a lot of burnt sienna so I'll use mainly burnt sienna back there and then for these middle ground rocks and the middle ground log I'll use a little bit of burnt umber and red to set a, a warm tone. So I'll do that initial wash and then I'll use a brush or a paper towel to wipe away the, the lightest lights to set my composition to do my drawing. You can see just while I've been setting up the light has changed so much the light's no longer on the rapids in the middle ground but that's okay I have a reference photo that I can use later to true it up. As long as I get the main elements of the scene and the colors I'm seeing in this afternoon light, I'll be happy. I don't have to have a finished, polished painting, just uh, an approximation and something I can hang the rest of the painting on later in the studio. I've got a 11 by 14 inch panel here. I've got the one third lines drawn on the panel already to help me with the initial sketch. I'll do the sketch in paint and I've got a little bit of texture on there because I gessoed that panel.
lovely couple hours here standing beside the swiftly running river and painting. Here's the finished painting. It's a little dark here. I had to move over to the side because the sun had come around, come out of the trees and was shining in my eyes. I think I got the composition that I wanted and I've got the colors that I'm seeing down on the panel. So I'll take it back to the studio and take a look at it again, touch it up a bit and throw it out on my website. Really enjoyed my day here. I hope you enjoyed being here with me, watching the painting process. If so, please like and subscribe. As always, thanks so much for joining me and I hope I see you out on the trail. Thank mm -hmm. you.